Our next speaker is from Jewish Voice for Labor, Leah Levan, and from, from also from the very, the very active Hastings and Rye. CLP. Hastings and Rye and Hastings yes. and Rye. Uh, anyway, um, so greetings from the Jewish Voice for Labor. Um, probably you all know we were launched uh, very successfully at the uh, 2017 conference, Labour Party conference. Uh, most of the uh, Labour Party members were enthused, uh, not to say ecstatic, and also probably relieved to hear Jewish voices loudly proclaiming our support for rights and justice for Palestinians, to hear a Jewish voice strongly supporting the dramatic shift to the left in the Labour Party, and strongly... <laughs> and strongly linking struggles for justice and a group committed to a, taking a stand against all forms of racism, a Jewish group that doesn't believe in Jewish exceptionalism, that somehow anti-Semitism is a worse form of racism than any other. Not everyone, however, welcomed us, uh, certainly not the bureaucracy of our party and uh, probably not most MPs. Instead, they continued to give credence to uh, the so-called Jewish labor movement, previously known as Boal Zion, which means Workers of Zion. They are still clearly that organization. That's not me casting aspersions. Just go on their website. They're very clear. They're not only an openly and uncritically Zionist group, but they also invariably side with the right wing of the Labour Party in their votes and in spearheading the witch hunt, which many comrades have referred to, Deborah in particular and Tony. Um, a witch hunt which, let's be honest, was also a key factor in our formation. A witch hunt where false, usually false, occasionally justified, but usually false cries of anti-Semitism has been used in attempts to silence the left and diminish the standing of our leaders. So we are working to defend people who've been suspended using skills amongst our membership. Recently, for example, we wrote to Ian McNichol about the failure to address a blatant and recorded example of Islamophobia. He replied in shock and horror that we would imply that there was a hierarchy of racisms. We're at that point and we will be uh, pursuing that, of course. Um, we, um, we obviously stand um, that for all who were accused of anything untoward or against labor values, that they should all have due process, natural justice, proportionality in the disciplinary actions. Uh, my comrade from Hastings and Rye has already talked about our preamble because it's ridiculous that uh, you can have a democracy review and not talk about members being treated uh, democratically or even against normal contracts of employment. You, you know, we have enough expertise in our movement about that. Now, we really do mean that everyone should be entitled to due process and to being treated as innocent until proven guilty. Which brings me to Jeremy Newpark. I wasn't going to mention him. However, <laughs> a little schadenfreude, I think, is allowed at this time. So until yesterday, the very vocal chair of the Jewish labor movement, who seemed to have very easy access to the leadership and certainly extremely act easy access to the press, so he was exposed by the Jewish Chronicle, of all things, uh, at the very least for financial mismanagement and almost certainly fraud. He stood as the Labour parliamentary private, uh, par prospective parliamentary candidate uh, at the 27, uh, 2017 election, and he is the leader of the small Labour group on Hartsmere Council. He has been called for a meeting with the actual leader of the council. We shall see what happens. How did this happen? Why are people so shocked that, uh, about his behavior? Well, I don't want to go into too much detail, and you can all look up the uh, case of uh, Fraser versus the University College Union. There's information about that uh, all over the place, free speech on Israel for an obvious example. But at that, um, the judgment, he acted as a witness in another case of uh, false claim of, uh, of anti-Semitism, and the judge um, said several things about him uh, in judge speak, where he um, said, uh, I say Jeremy Newmark was a witness, he said, um, we regret to say we have rejected as untrue the evidence of Mr. Newmark. He said a lot more. One of the things he said, it's not for them to comment on witnesses' opinions. One exception was a remark made by Mr. Newman that we found to be extraordinarily arrogant, but also disturbing. 
So he went on to heavily also criticize two MPs, uh, McShane and John Mann. Uh, so we won't go into all of that because I don't want to spend too much time on the Jewish labor movement. But anyway, Jeremy Newmark, chair of the Jewish labor movement um, until yesterday, has been exposed. Even the Jewish labor movement have been forced, uh, forced him to resign because he hung on clinging to it till the very last minute. Yet the very least, given what I've just said about that particular uh, case and the, judge, the judge's comments, the very least they should have known is that he was a man that was, he was not a man of integrity. So as I said before, a little schadenfreude is certainly allowed to all of us, especially in the Jewish Voice for Labour, um, given particularly the way that he has pushed um, not for an innocent until proven guilty, but a guilty without even the chance to prove innocent witch hunt, so that we have comrades like Jackie Walker, like Mark Wadsworth, like Tony Greenstein, whether, you, whether their accusations are or are not justified, I would say not, but even if they were justified to be hanging around for almost two years without proper process, and meanwhile vilified by the press who are being fed by, sadly to say, right-wing people in our movement. So we think it's about time that at the very least the Chakrabarti recommendations on due process that were implemented as a very first step towards democracy. And I would like Jeremy Newpark to be treated in accordance with those principles when he comes up for his own disciplinary hearing, which surely must be happening soon. <laughs> But as I say, I don't really want to talk too much anymore about the Jewish labour movement. So our priorities, and we've got some leaflets that you can have a look at. So our political priorities are universal human rights, justice for all, and freedom of expression and democracy in the Labour Party. And we take our inspiration from the long history of Jewish involvement in the socialist and trade union movements and in anti-racist and anti-fascist struggles, including against apartheid and for civil rights. We stand for rights and justice for Jewish people everywhere and against the wrongs and injustices to Palestinians and other oppressed pe people. So what can we offer you? Well, many of you in your Labour parties, in, that's great timing, in your Labour parties and maybe your, in your CLPs and unions will have been offered training by the Jewish Labour movement. We can offer training. Please let your CLPs know that. Um, we can do that. Um, well, obviously, we can provide speakers. So we have a large number of people who have a great deal of expertise about anti-Semitism, about the labor movement, about Jewish history uh, in Eastern Europe, in many other places, and of course, about the uh, struggle for justice for Palest in, in Palestine. Um, we're very delighted that Deborah from the grassroots black left, I've got that right, um, mentioned us and we are really very, very happy to be working with them and, uh, and standing for their rights to, uh, to be the voice of the of black people in our movement. Um, we are very proud to work with progressive movements um, and we're working to transform our society. We are all activists in our local CLPs and in our trade unions, some of us standing for council, at least one of us is hoping to become a, PP, a prospective parliamentary candidate. We are not a one-trick pony. We're not just here to oppose the Jewish labor movement. We're here to work in solidarity um, with all of you and with our, our comrades throughout the movement. Thank you.